Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. This week we are working on a grungy neon style of cake. We're going to jump straight in. You can either make this cake in a 4, 6, 8 inch or a 5, 7, 9 inch to get the same effect. I've already got my bottom tier covered in sugar paste. Please do check my channel and all the links in the description box which gives you all the basic steps needed to get to this point, such as my vanilla cake recipe, buttercream recipes, ganache recipes, how to apply the ganache and the sugar paste. We're just making some paint up here. This is pink airbrush colour and I'm just dabbing a little bit of white powder in to make the paint a bit more opaque. I'm then taking a fluffy brush and starting to add on patches of the pink. There's no specific way to do this, just whack it on. What I'm doing is starting with my lightest colour first as it's easier to paint over these. I've now made some purple paint, again using the white powder to make it more opaque and you can see I'm able to take the colour over the pink a little bit before it starts to smudge too much. All the paints I'm using were either airbrush colour or watered down gels just mixed with the powder. You can also try lots of different colour combos but I was using the birthday girls backdrop and balloons as inspiration. I've now got some blue on a smaller brush and I'm starting to paint over some of the other patches and blend the colours into some of the others. Lastly, I'm going in with my darkest colour, which is this navy. To add a little bit of metallic, I've got some silver luster dust mixed with lemon extract and I'm also painting this here and there to add little patches of sheen. Once the base pattern is on, I'm going in with my darker colours to add a bit of design interest. I'm just putting brush strokes here and there where I think they will look good. This is where you can just get really creative and start dabbing it on. Then we're really going to grunge it up and start splattering on some paint. This is white powder mixed with either water or lemon extract and I'm loading up my paintbrush and flicking it at the cake. I'm adding plenty on here and then swapping over to black paint to use for black splots. Everything I've used will be linked in the description box below. You'll need to do this on the bottom tier and the top tier of your cake and leave them to set. Now we're making some bricks for our middle tier. I'm just rolling out my paste, leaving it quite chunky and I'm using my quilting ruler to help keep all my bricks a similar size. I'm just cutting two strips the same width and then I'm marking out what I think would be a good brick length. You just want to cut a ton of these out and take your super texture roller, which is just a bit of rolled up tin foil. Start attacking the surface of your brick and also the edges. It will push them out of shape and make some bricks bigger than others, but this just adds to the rustic effect. I'm then placing the bricks onto the middle tier, starting with a band around the middle first, so then when you place the brick above and below, you can place them on more equally. Once all the bricks are on, I'm painting with blue airbrush colour, dabbing it into all those deep texture marks we made with the tinfoil. Again, you can use any colour scheme you like. I was working off the brick background of the invites. 
There are many ways to make ball toppers you see on cakes nowadays. One of the quickest, easiest and cheapest is using polystyrene balls. Not only are they easier to make, but it helps with a weight issue. The way I do it is to roll a piece of paste, a similar size ball to one of my polystyrene balls, and then just pushing the ball inside and bringing up the paste around the edges until it's fully encased. You then want to roll it firmly between your hands to get rid of all the seams and turn it into a nice smooth ball. I generally don't need to use any water or glue because I use paste by Renshaw's which is usually quite sticky enough but you can always add some if it helps. Once you've got a nice smooth ball I'm inserting a cocktail stick in the centre giving it a last smooth and popping it to one side to set. You want to make these in all different sizes and shapes of colours to suit your cake. For the topper I'm using foam core. This is a nice quick alternative to making a big triangle out of paste, waiting for it to set and just hoping it doesn't break. It's just far quicker and easier. I've cut out two random triangles and layering them up to see how I like it. I'm going to go for this angle, so I'm just chopping off any excess that's going to interfere with the bottom. I'm pretty happy with that, so now I'm going to cover my triangles in paste. The best way to do this is with piping gel, as it allows the paste to stick to the open cut parts of the foam better than water does. You can see I'm just trimming off any excess, covering one of my triangles in black and another in blue. Now it's time to stack, so I'm adding my dowels inside my bottom tier. I always use one more dowel than the tier going above it, so the cake sitting on top of this will be a 7 inch, so I'm using 8 straws. Once they're all in and at the same height, I'm spreading a little star of ganache across the dowels, which will then hold my 7 inch tier on top. The next cake going on top of this will be a 5 inch, so I'm using 6 straws. I'm then just choosing what I want the front of my cake to be and covering the board in blue sugar paste. A full in-depth tutorial on how to do this toilet seat method for a nice clean finish around the bottom is always in the description box. I've then traced the name out onto some greaseproof paper to make sure it's the size I want and because my middle tier is not flat I need to find a way to transfer the name onto the bricks. So I painted across the back of the name with white paint first and then I'm scoring that white paint onto the bricks. As you can see some of the bricks stick out quite far and then go into the base of the cake so I need something a little bit more visible. Once I have the name on it pretty much looks like I'm ruining it here <laughs> and I'm dabbing with very pale pink paint adding in slightly deeper pink paint to the very centre of the letters. This is to give me a glow effect behind what's going to be a neon light name. Usually I would prefer to use an airbrush for a glow as that would be perfect for it but this just wouldn't show up on our dark blue bricks. You could try using an ethanol based airbrush colour which will show up a bit more but my colour of choice is always water based so it doesn't clog up my airbrush. For the neon light itself, I'm rolling out some of my hot pink paste into a long string and layering it over my template to follow the letters and then just cutting where the letters meet a little bit to make sure it doesn't turn out too bulky. Once they've had a chance to firm up just a little bit to make them easier to handle, I'm sticking it straight onto the paint following the blotches as my guide. They should stick straight away to the tacky paint. Then you can go in and add more glow where it needs it. I've now stuck my two triangles together with a bit of piping gel and I've placed a cocktail stick up inside the centre of the foam core. This is what makes it such a great medium as it holds supports really easily. I've just popped that on top into position. For my spiky iridescent balls, although you could probably make this out of isomalt, for the price it would cost and more importantly time it would take, it was far easier to buy actual Christmas decorations, which is exactly what I did. This was a specific shape as some of the balloons are spiky at a party. So I found these online in a Christmas sale and bought a few of them. Firstly, we need to get rid of the actual Christmas decoration part. I'm just taking some pliers to undo the hook, taking off the string, the bead, and then the metal hook actually threads back through the base and drops out of the bottom. Now all we're left with is an acrylic spiky ball. 
where the hole was for the decoration, I was able to stick a cocktail stick nice and snugly inside. Now it holds the spiky ball pretty securely. Even though we have our cocktail stick, the spikes will get in the way a little bit and they are going to puncture the surface of your sugar paste. So make sure you give it a good wipe down with an antibacterial wash. I'm then holding up my ball shapes on cocktail sticks and shoving them in and around the spikes where I think they look cool. I'm also adding some hand cut pink numbers to my topper before continuing with the decoration just so I can see how it's all building and working together. Like I said, you can change the colour scheme here to whatever theme you like. I think it would work in all sorts of different colour ways. You can see I hold up the balls for a little bit before figuring out where they're going to look best. That's one thing I do a lot, faff around with the decorations. And that's it, we're all done. A three tier, epic, grungy birthday cake that fits in perfectly with the rest of the birthday party details. I really love the addition of the spiky Christmas ornaments, which I'm so glad I decided to buy instead of attempting to make. Not only would it have taken me so much longer, but it would have added several excess pounds to that birthday cake that just wouldn't have been needed. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please leave me a comment below so I know that you've seen it and that you're still around. And if you fancy, give it a share with someone you might find it useful. Thanks guys, see you in the next one.